Back in action. Tied up now 3-3. Three to three. It's the Alima League Finals of the Finals. We've had an insanely awesome series, and it's been really fun, and I hope you guys have enjoyed it so far. But this has been some pretty nutso stuff, and uh, I really don't know what to expect. I mean, normally I'm pretty good at calling these things. You get, like, a good feel for these players, what's going to happen. My best guess is, like, cannons into hatchery blocks, right? Because this happened every time. Why not happen again? But... Game number seven, the grand finals underway. It's the Alima League and spawning in the top right corner of the map. Playing for the team Dead Pixels for the last time today. We see true. Sorry, one sec. My voice is going. <clears throat> His opponent in the top left, though. Playing for the team MVP. It's the blue Protoss, Yanghua. I really, really... Love that I don't know what to expect. There's so many parts of StarCraft 2 where it gets stale, it gets boring. You've seen the same build, the same gateway expand every single time, leading into that Nexus, going for that big old fat gateway all in. That could happen, and that's fine by me, because I don't know what's happening this series. It's been so wild and different and weird, and once again, we're probably going to have a hatchery block, and once again, we're probably going to have a forge, but that doesn't mean that it sets the pace of the game by any means, because both players have reacted both well and terribly to these moves. So Yangwa already goes to the body block. I do hope he leaves a probe on patrol or something. Don't let this go down. Uh, actually, the drone gets really low quick. Yikes. Uh, two shots from dead. Got to be careful. Zappity zap. Zap. Okay, the regen on the drone is quite nice here. Uh, one more shot, it's gonna die. So he tries to go for the extractor. Not gonna work though, so he heads towards the main. Meanwhile, Pylon comes down to block at home. This is really annoying. He's banking 400 minerals. He's gotta do something. So he takes the hatch for here at the third instead. Uh, Jordan is playing a lot of Ring Around the Rosie just to buy time for itself to regenerate. He can no longer go for the proper block here on the hatchery at that natural, and that's okay, but it can still be annoying to put a hatchery in the main. Or really, anywhere he wants. Even his natural. Dun dun dun. <laughs> I don't know if that would actually happen. <laughs> hatchery is natural just seems so weird. I actually pulled drones because I guess it took so long to put that pool down. He was really hoping to go for another hatchery up here. So he spent a lot of his money, or saved a bunch of his money for quite some time. And sadly did not get it put to use. What's that guy? Sorry. Oh, it's all sorts of chilly in here to put my covers on. Now it looks like I'm wearing black Snuggie, but you guys can't see it, so it doesn't matter. It complies with the Twitch dress code. I don't remember it saying anything about not being allowed to wear Snuggies. And I'm wearing no pants under my <laughs> my covers, so something, something here works, <laughs> I think. Don't ban me! Uh, true, though is, uh, I don't know, it, it sounds weird to say. I want to say I actually worry about him just because he didn't get to hatchery block this game. And he went straight to that gas steal. Um, I'm not saying that's what makes or breaks him, being able to be cheesy like that, but I really feel like it's the control of the game he gets. The fact that he kind of knows that he puts his opponent a little bit on tilt, that he gets to dictate some of the way this goes, that really influences why he's able to get ahead in that mid game. And that's really where true strength has always been, the mid game. Uh, it's what carries him to the late game. And I know that sounds really silly and cheesy and corny to phrase it like that, but it's the truth of things. So I'm really not sure if this is gonna give him that, um, that I'm in such a good spot, I win type feeling, but and at the same time, he's pretty susceptible to these gateway all and something he's definitely going to have to keep an eye out for. Uh, proxy in the Twilight Council, though. Sorry, let's talk about this. Too busy looking at what's going on standardly, not looking for what's going on non-standardly. Uh, I want to say Blink, Hidden, and Gateways, but at the same time, DTs have been so prevalent out of Yangwa. I think he's used them in almost every game. Definitely not every game, but almost every game in the series. Hmm. Hmm. We're going to have to wait and see. I really wouldn't be shocked if it was Blink, but he left the probe here, which is what makes me think it will be DTs. Uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of gas for either, though. And the minerals he's spending at home are to fake out his opponent, make him think, like, oh, look at all these things I have here. I'm taking my gases, and you're not looking. But he does throw down that dark shrine. Okay. Okay. So what does this mean? Well... We've seen True caught off guard a couple of times with that Overseers. He doesn't make them as fast as possible. He might not be suspecting this because of that gas steal. 
I don't think True in his mind writes like writes off like okay I took one of his guesses. There's no way he's going Archons or Templar or or, or Dark Templar. He can't have a guess for it. But I'm sure he's kind of got that in the back of his mind. Perhaps a small little um, cockiness where it's like all right I took that guess. Like all ins aren't coming anytime soon and. Well, it doesn't have to be that all in with three gases. You can still certainly be annoying. In fact, he follows us up with Blink too, so he's not even going to keep it standard. And True will never scout any of this. Now he actually starts a couple of spines at home, and I rather applaud this choice, uh, as again, all ins have kind of been the flavor of the day. So whether he knows this is coming or not, it's better to have these and not need them than not have them and need them. Uh, catches a couple of pylons down here. This probably has to be really careful. It doesn't actually breadcrumb and leave uh, lead true to his uh, actual proxies down here. That, that blink's still researching, but Dark Templar should come in here any moment. There we go. Warping in directly. Heading towards that third. No detection. Oh, no layer. Oh, this is really bad. He's expecting a gateway all in, so he's not going to layer tech. And normally this is okay. He's not going to have detection for this. He can pull back and maybe put something in the natural, maybe put something in the main, but these Dark Templars should kill this hatchery. Yeah, immediately just pulls off this. He knows that if he starts Spore Callers too, they're probably not going to finish in time. Three Dark Templars have way too much damage to make this work. Yeah, Cybercore, I don't know. It looks funny with Team Colors. Deal with it. Um, but this base is going to die. Even with the Transfuse, which is not available. Uh, this kind of sucks. He's going to get these DTs out of here too, though, because the Spore Callers are completing. Uh, and they'll be littered around the map afterwards. There's one here in the natural. Okay, you put one here in the main too. So playing it super safe, making sure that he doesn't take too much from this. But this really sucks, losing a third like that. Now, he might think it's only Dark Temple, but I not realize the blink still came up behind this. So, Yanghua is still totally capable of just straight up gateway all ending him here. And his uh, additional four do start completing here. That'll put him at like, what, seven? Eight. Oh, he's gonna fall on eight gateways. Okay, because I can count. No, it's seven. It's a forge. I'm clicking it. It's a forge. Come on, Rifkin, get it together. So seven gates, DTs that could easily become Archons, or just stay Dark Templar and be incredibly annoying, whatever his choice may be. Uh, he's got quite the scary army here. Would like to see two cannons, if not three, but definitely two here on the defensive line. Let's get the money for it. Uh, just to prevent any sort of counterattack from being life-threatening. But no, he's just going to go with the one. My early upgrades started up here. True thinking about that late game. Might be feeling confident and fine. Like, hey, I got these spine crawlers out and a spore crawler. No more DTs for me. Uh, he's going to rush out here. Oh, find the pylon. Does he find the tech? It's not a big deal to lose the Twilight Council. He's not looking for plus weapon upgrades. Yang was all inning at this point. He's not continuing to tech up. It's the Dark Shrine that could be a problem if he loses it. But as he moves out, let's not forget, Archons are typically good against Lings if there's some buffer for them. But if the Lings get a surround on the Archons, no good. No dice. Uh, I probably could have blinked for that, I don't know. One soccer. Uh, there's the cannons I was hoping to see. Is that a full wall off? I guess that is. It just looks a little bit weird as all. Archons, though, going to tear down this base like nobody's business. There's a lot of Zerglings in play, guys. But keep in mind, Zerglings won't be able to deal with this. There's no weapon upgrade, so it's not that... The, not that two shot scenario we just finished witnessing, but still, it's just the brute force of this attack coming in at full force. What can True do? He has to make a decision right now. Come home or go hard. And I think if he goes hard, he's going to lose. So he decides to come home, and this is going to be the best choice, in my opinion. But it's still not a good one. It's not a situation he should have ever been in in the first place. And this is all because Yanghua was sneaky enough to, cheeky enough to sneak this out. Oh, there's a drone down here. Oh, he could start a base. If it's a base trade, he could actually start a base. But it wouldn't matter if he can't contend with the army. He's got more army supply than his opponent, and I, technically that's okay, I guess. But the problem is, it's not efficient supply. These Archons are going to work so well. There's a lot of spine colors and some roaches, and maybe with the best concave in the world, he can hold tight. But he's not going to hold well. He takes out the pylons behind this. I like this move. There's more pylons being placed down, though. So it's not going to be the auto win through this. The Archon's starting to fall very quickly, though. And those spine crawlers are holding strong. Legs flung from behind. And Yangwa gets caught a little off guard by this. Sandwich between plus one Lings and Roaches at the top of the ramp. Even though he's got Blink, is starting to be beaten back. With the Archons falling, I think True may have broken it. I think True may have just defended and held this game. And if that's the case, then True is about to win this best of seven. He's going to beat back the last couple of stalkers down to 8 supply. What can he do at home but sit with one cannon? Fantastic hold out of true. The timing on those links coming couldn't have been more perfect. And he sneaks out a third. Oh, man. He didn't just win this game. He put a little bit of spice on the end of it for you guys, too. Fantastic.
Infestation Pit starts up. He's going to try and get some uh, fungal growth to make sure Blink Stalkers don't get out of hand, but they've already been dealt with. Stalkers alone with Blink are not that strong. Stalkers alone with Blink and even weapon upgrades are not that strong. It's only when there's a lot of them they snowball out of control. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, what a hold. What a defense. Losing that third so early, totally unprepared for what was coming. Like, I applaud Yangwa for the, the tricks this game. But tricks are a thing whores do for money. And true, well, he held strong and he played very well. And he's a, he might not have won this directly yet, but he should win this game. Although, before I get too excited, he did almost throw a game that he had guaranteed won with two gold bases. So, I'm getting really hyped, but we gotta dial it back and consider he is heavy on the lings again. <laughs> I just, I don't think he can lose this though. I, I said that before I know and I probably jinxed that game by saying it, but I really don't think he can lose this game. It would take one serious F up to make sure that he lost this game. Because not only does he have three bases at home, and that's great, he's taking that fourth one down here. He's hidden this base in just the sneakiest of spots. Like, the best part is, too, like, this is like, oh, this is where you proxied? Let me just dance on your grave a little bit here. Uh, and he made sure to kill all the buildings with the lings before he took this, too. So there's no vision from Yangwa. He doesn't know this is the case. Okay, well, Hive Tech on the way. Vipers, true not looking to push in here. Because, again, keep in mind, he can still throw this game. Uh, but he's not going to. I, I just... He, he's making the right moves this time. He's keeping it calm. He's going for the Vipers. He's getting those fungal growths out. He'll be able to lock this down. True, baby. True. Uh, this is kind of nice, too, because Yangwa has already won a monthly final. So I'm not saying like he doesn't deserve more money, but uh, it's nice to see True win one here, too. You know, nice little spread. I think we had center last... Oh, yo! Which race is Imba? Hang on, how does this work? Protoss won the first one. Um... Terran won the last one, and now Zerg is gonna win the third one. Yo, who do we nerf? Who do we cry about? Who who do we nerf? Terran. Freaking Terran. Bunch of patch Terrans. <laughs> I don't know. I'm Terran, guys. For those who don't know, so can't uh, really hate too hard. But fungal growths. Just a waiting and a waiting and a waiting, getting that energy up. Ultralist Cavern on the way. Yang was never going to take that third. Again, the tech's not been here. He's just been investing in stalkers. And let's be honest here, he's got a ton. But here's the thing. It doesn't matter. He could have 100 blink stalkers. If there's fungal growth, they're going to die. The hardest part about this next engagement is going to be breaking through this front wall. You know, the, the hard exterior to get into this nougaty, delicious inside. I, I feel like I know he's making the right moves and he's playing it super safe but this is the longest victory ever and I swear if if true loses this game I'm like I, I see the longer we wait right the longer you wait the better chance you always give your opponent to recover I, I still feel very confident I would if I had money to spare I would put money on true to win this game but what I don't like is that he has given his opponent a lot of time to recover. The fact that Yangwa does have 45 blink stalkers is a little bit disconcerting. But True's got enough money to replace anything he loses. He's going to try and get behind this. Yeah, Link's actually going to disengage. Ultra's going to come out. Ultra's actually aren't even the right answer here, I feel. Ultralists are, uh, they got the damage, but they actually get kited by blink stalkers pretty well. But let's see, will the Rifkin curse be real? Did I jinx this game? Is True totally effed? I like the spine crawlers coming down here too. Uh, but Ling's always behind this every step of the way. We don't actually have many upgrades. We do have Adrenal Glands, a plus two again. So very eerie similar situation where True's maxed out with a lot of weird supply. But there's no sentries here. There's no immortals. There's no storms. It's just Blink stalkers. A couple of fungals start this fight. Ling's wrapping from behind and every stalker on the left is fungal. And every stalker on the right is in a blinding cloud. This should be the end of the game. The supply is just toppling way too fast. It's way too uneven and about to tap out. GG, ladies and gentlemen, your third monthly final for the Alima League will go to true.